Morning. I will have a uh, black coffee, large. Caffeine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a diuretic, you know. Sucks the vitamins and minerals right out of your body. Ah, you know, sweetheart, I gotta be honest with you. You're a little too beautiful and too smart to be schlepping organic bagels and selling old Elton John albums. Well, that is the problem with the degree in fine arts. It qualifies you to do absolutely nothing. Mm. Onion bagel, cream cheese on the side. Wonderful. It's fantastic. Oh, what is this? I didn't see this before. Is this new? Yeah, I made it the other day. And Moon's gonna clear out that cabinet so I can sell them. Really? Well, that's nice of them. You know, if you had some startup money, you could be doing that full time. Yeah, and if I had a degree in accounting, then I could have a real grown-up job. Ah, touche. Cook for me tonight? You know I will. Love you. Have a good day. Yeah, that caffeine, it's, uh, chemically stimulates your stress responses. Ah. Kind of like, uh, finding a snake in your bed. You pull back the covers. Oh, snake! Your heart starts pounding, you're short of breath, you break into a sweat. Whew. Caffeine. Snake in the bed. Well, if you feel this way, why are, you know, why are you selling coffee? Oh. Not my place to judge, man. <laughs> now you have yourself a fine day. All righty then. Okay. Judge Lockhart doesn't like to waste time, so we should be out of there by 10. That quickly? Yeah, well, it's a divorce, not a first degree murder. But Lockhart runs a pretty tight ship, so don't say anything unless you're asked a direct question, okay? Okay. Both sides are in agreement as to distribution of property. Support is moot since there are no children. Did you have something to say, Mrs. Rendell? <clears throat> Did your attorney advise you not to speak in my courtroom? Well, I'm asking you a question, so what did you want to say? Uh, well, just that there was a child, um, but she passed away. Uh, her heart, she was born with I was, um, congenital. Um, <clears throat> she was four days old. What was her name? Allison Marie. Allison Marie. It's a beautiful name. And I am very, very sorry for your loss. However, However, I am not going to give a final ruling on this decree today. Your Honor, we were hoping... I know what you're hoping for, Counselor. But this petition needs further study, and I'm issuing a continuance for 90 days. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to ship out for six months, and, you know, I'd really like this wrapped up. I understand. But I do not rush into making important decisions for the sake of convenience. Court adjourned. Your Honor, if I may. Your Honor. Mom, you know he's not supposed to be in here. They don't allow seeing eye dogs. You're not blind, Mom. So, what went on in there just now? What are you talking about? That young couple. If they were anxious to end it, why not let them? You know, I can't discuss that. What are you knitting? No. Oh. It started as a scarf. I think I got carried away and now it's a blanket. Yes, come in. Oh, hi, Judge. Uh, I'm Jack Griffith. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm the new editor-in-chief, star reporter, photographer, circulation um, manager of the Cedar Cove Chronicle. Congratulations. What can I do for you? Well, I would love to talk to you today about that decision in there. I can't discuss that. It just seems that an uncontested divorce would be a slam dunk. Mr. Griffith. Jack. Jack. If you hang out in courtrooms long enough, you'll find that when it comes to the law, there is no such thing as a slam dunk. Is there anything else I could do for you? I've got it. Um, no. Well, Hello? nice to meet you. you Welcome to Cedar Cove. All right. Just about Thank you. Right here. Oh, and Jack, could you do me a favor? 
Hey, hey. Please don't ever bring a cup of coffee into my courtroom again. Oh, well, I was just... It's Senator Raymond's office. Petey? Senator Raymond. Oh, please. First time I met him was at a frat party and he had his head in a bucket of margaritas. Hi, Petey. Hello, Olivia. Well, is it re-election time already? I thought I'd just send you a check. <laughs> and no, for once, I'm not calling about money. Um, I guess you've heard that Judge Bloom is retiring. I heard. What? Heard what? Mom, please. Well, you are on a very short list of possible replacements, and I just wanted to gauge your interest before I floated your name out there. I, I would be very, very interested. All right, well, I'm going to get the ball rolling here. Please do me a favor. Don't spread this around until it becomes official, all right? I want my office to make the announcement. Of course, Petey. I'll be in touch. <gasps> oh. oh, this is cruel. <laughs> what did he say? What? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this is driving me nuts. Nobody knows who this guy is. Try City Hall. No, they had a fire back in the 30s. No records. Nobody knows. Is it really that important to you? What kind of town has a statue and nobody knows who it is? This one, obviously. Oh, that's a mom right there. Hi, excuse me. Could I talk to you for a minute? Uh, my name is Jack Griffith. I'm with you. Oh, yes. You should really dedicate a page every week to seniors activities. Well, that's... That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, but what I wanted to talk to you about was... What I... Oh! Wally Dorfman! Wally Dorfman. Come on, you don't want to miss this. I wonder what he caught this guy. He's a fisherman? <laughs> well, sort of. Look at that thing. A nice catch, Wally. Bike. Ten speed. Gonna ride that one home, are you, Wally? Wally catches the most interesting things. Last time, it was the back of a 72 Camaro. Oh, yeah, it still had that boat Nixon bumper sticker on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope he doesn't do catch and release. <laughs> I just really think that the people of this town would love to read more about their judge. Uh, look, Jack, I'm not sure my daughter would like an article about her. Oh, well, I would make it very flattering. You can trust me on that. Well, listen, while I've got you, do you know who that is? No idea. The plaque fell off years ago. I can't talk about any of her decisions. No, 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 of course not. I, I'm thinking more background stuff. Such as? Oh, like, um, I don't know. Is she married? <laughs> Divorced? Single? And he doesn't mention the federal thing? See, I can keep a secret. And how did he find out the personal stuff? Well, that I might have told him. Uh, we had coffee. He loves coffee. He just moved here, and he's from Philadelphia. Well, that explains a couple of things. He's single. Uh, well, divorced. And I think he might like you. Uh, Mom, what are we, on the playground here or something? Why are you upset? It's a flattering article, honey. It makes you sound very independent. That's not the point. It was a simple little divorce case, and he's trying to stir up controversy, and I don't need that. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. One little article. I'm sure it's no big deal. <clears throat> he's nice looking, don't you think? <laughs> No, I'm early for once. I ordered for you. I have some news. I know, the judge thing. Congratulations. How did you, Grandma? Your grandmother. I should have known. She's better than Facebook. It's great, Mom. 
Well, it's not official yet, so don't be spreading it around. It's not me you gotta worry about, it's your mother. I made that necklace when I was 15. You don't have to wear it just to be polite. I'm not being polite. I like it. Going through your jewelry box and stealing back all the old stuff I made you. It might be worth a lot of money someday, like an early Van Gogh sketch or something. Maybe I should cut off an ear to help it sell better. <laughs> you got me one scoop. You said you were fat. I'm not fat. I didn't say you were fat. I'm quoting you. Last time we left here, you said, don't let me get the large, I feel fat. Direct quote. Well, I always feel fat when we leave here, but don't listen to me. <laughs> so are we still on for dinner next week? Can I bring Warren? Sure. You don't mind? If I mind it, I would say so. Hey! <laughs> and stay out of my jewelry box. New idea. What do you think? What? Ooh, very pretty. Easy, too. Could knock out a dozen in a couple hours. <laughs> you know, I have to be honest with you, sweetheart. I always knew you were a little weird when you asked for a soldering gun for your birthday. <laughs> what is that you're doing? You always rinse fish in sea salt first. Did your mother ever teach you anything about cooking? My mother is a brilliant woman, but from the time I was 16, I thought all food was cooked in a microwave. Oh. Speaking of your lovely mother, she uh, doesn't quite approve of me, does she? I think she just feels a little funny because you're only a couple years younger than she is. Has she mentioned that I've been in her courtroom? No. Hmm. What for? Oh, come on, honey. I'm a developer. You don't build over a hundred houses without someone occasionally suing you. So how did you do? Well, so far I'm batting a thousand. I always walk out the winner. Good. So then the two of you shouldn't have any kind of problems. Ah, uh, well, I hope not. But, just telling you that, before I give you this. Marry me, Justine. What's the problem? It's my personal life on the front page, Dad. Call me Bobby, all right? This makes us feel a little closer. No, it doesn't. You just don't want any of the young chicks in here knowing you're old enough to have a grown daughter. Hey. Hey. So I'm on alert. We're gonna be shipping out soon. Okay. So I guess we'll have to finalize this when you get back. Look, I want you to do me a favor. Can you take care of the Camaro for me? I'm gonna be gone for six months. It's not good for it to sit, so if you're just driving around a little bit. I don't need your car. Yeah, because that piece of junk you're driving around is just great. Okay, is that all you wanted? What is the problem? You're doing me a favor, and I'll sleep better knowing you're driving something that's not gonna break down in the middle of the night. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me, babe. Stay out of it, Dad. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. I'll drop the keys off before I leave. Will you at least look at it? Warren, it's very sweet, but a little crazy. I mean, we barely know each other. I hardly know each other. What are you talking about? Romeo just met Juliet at a party. And they were dead by the fifth act. I mean, can we just leave things the way they are? OK, fine, then you move in with me. It's crazy that you're paying rent. I like my little apartment. Really? OK, I'll try that on. <sighs> no. Why not? Warren, I can't accept this. And I have to go. Where? I told you, I got suckered into the high school reunion committee and we're in the midst of planning it right now. Honey, I'm sorry to say this, but you're far too young to be having a reunion. <laughs> Should I get two tickets? <laughs> right, yeah, then I'd show up and look like one of the chaperones. I'll pass.
just in time. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so we're debating DJ versus Larry's band. Oh, Larry's band sucks. <laughs> what a DJ. Guess who's back in town? I was sorry to hear about your dad. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I came back. You know, a few, few legal things to clear up. So, where are you living now? <laughs> On his boat. You should come by sometime. It's pretty nice. I thought for sure you would have stayed back east after college. Yeah, I thought about it, but um, I don't know. Just came back. Felt right. What were you doing in Alaska? A lot of things. <laughs> Mostly working on a commercial fishing boat. Wow. Tough job. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> I like it, though. It keeps me in shape. Yeah, I see that. I mean, you know, you look good. Yeah, yeah, you too. Really good. Well, uh, I better get going here. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah. Your hair smells exactly the same. Is that good or bad? It's, uh, it's nice. What do you think, Hank? I'm sure didn't have any judges in Philly that looked like that. don't have to keep introducing yourself. <laughs> I heard you weren't too crazy about my article. Ah, uh, where'd you hear that? I ran into your mom. She seems to be the uh, town historian. That's a nice way of putting it. Look, I, I'm sorry about the article. I didn't mean to offend you. I just wish you would have talked to me about it. I, I tried, remember? Try harder next time. Well, believe it or not, this is my first seagull calling contest. Oh, boy, you're in for a treat. Down from Shaw Island, we have number eight, one of our favorites. How about we do some handicapping here? I, uh, I picked number eight here to win. Right. Well, he kind of looks like a bird. That's my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a very skilled physician, but come on, you gotta admit he does sort of look like a seagull. Okay, I have a point, but 12's gonna win. You, uh, 
Care to put 10 bucks on that? Done. All right, well, now it's a little interesting. Let's go number eight. We are number nine from Lupe Island. OK, tell me the truth now. How did you know number 12 was going to win, huh? He's won the last four years. Of course. <laughs> How are you setting in? Oh, it's OK. It's just all a little uh, different for me. What brought you here? Uh, you know, just a, just a change of scenery, that's all. You locked your car? <laughs> uh, yeah. I locked my house, too, you know? I'm, I'm weird that way. Well, you're in Cedar Cove now. We don't lock our doors. Oh, is that right? Well, I'll have you know, I read in Cold Blood, these charming, quaint little towns are death traps. I'm on to you, people. <laughs> Well, Jack, it was, it was fun. See okay. ya. Bye-bye. Uh, Olivia, I was just kind of wondering if you wanted to, you know, go for uh, dinner, you know, get some dinner with me sometime. Off the record? Absolutely. Well, I have to check my calendar. Give me a call tomorrow. Is that a polite way of uh, saying get lost? No, I am not that polite. I would have said get lost. Call me. I don't believe in alphabetical order, Justine. No, no one can find anything. That's the joy of browsing. So no sales yet? Only been 24 hours. Hey. Hey. Plans for lunch? Look, Seth, I'm um, seeing somebody. Yeah, I know. He's a little old for you, isn't he? That is none of your business. Okay. So that's it. What? Why you give up easy? If the fish ain't biting, you move on. Charming analogy, but um, I didn't actually say no. I just thought you should have all the facts. <laughs> so, when's your lunch break? Come on, I work for Moon. See you later, Moon. Later. So what are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe go back to Alaska. Maybe just cast off, see where I end up. So you don't have any sort of plans? My dad had plans. He went to a job he hated every day so he could retire at 65 and enjoy himself. And he killed over dead at 49. I'm sorry. But you still got to do something. Well, I'll do something. It's going to be something I like. <laughs> so you're leaving. Funny thing is, Justine, I've kind of just been drifting the last few years. And every place I landed felt temporary. Even if I really liked the place, it was always in the back of my mind I'd end up here in Cedar Cove. Just like you did. You are not going to believe this. Mom, please. One of Senator Raymond's aides is about to arrive any minute. Warren bought an engagement ring. Who told you that? My hairdresser's daughter, the one with the piercings. She said Warren was in the other day and bought a huge diamond ring. Mom, I can't deal with this right now. <coughs> Mom, please, the dog. <coughs> oh, Buttercup. I am so sorry. Please come in, Mr. Douglas. That's no problem. <laughs> Mr. Douglas. You tell the senator my daughter is going to make a fabulous film. OK, church. Mom, you can go now. Thank you. Thanks so much. I am so sorry. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. fine. Please, have a seat. Thank you. Coffee's that good, huh? <laughs> I wish. So, you got anything today? 
I caught a couple of kids drinking the playground last night. Confiscate anything good? <laughs> no, I only drink the cheap stuff. Good morning, fellas. How are you? Nice to see you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I would have come in, but, um, well, I didn't want to get in trouble. You drink way too much coffee. Uh-huh. Listen, I thought you might want to uh, see this. I found it online. Seems congratulations are in order. Hold the congratulations. All it says is that I'm being considered for federal judgeship. Yeah. Well, nonetheless, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Jack. Olivia, come on. This, this is legitimate news. For once, oh. please. What do you say, huh? All right. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Come on. So, why you, do you think, huh? No idea. No? Did you uh, know the senator when you guys were at Yale? You do your homework. Well, I do try, ma'am. <laughs> so? And yeah, we went to law school together. Ah, you see? Connections. Yeah, it's not like that where you come from, I suppose. No, no connections are needed there. Just a uh, hefty bribe will do the trick, believe me. <laughs> hey, listen, while I, uh, while I have you, why don't I get your picture here? No, I'm, I'm just not feeling really pretty today. <laughs> Come on, Olivia, you look great. Jack, the paper has my official portrait. Uh-huh, and who says this is for the paper? You're a piece of work. Uh-huh, smile. Right. Now that's a keeper. That is a keeper. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like that. Relax. Honey, I'm trying. It's just that your mother can be a very intimidating woman. This was her idea. Remember, she's a terrible cook, so chill it down, be polite, and we'll get pizza on the way home. I can't wait. Come on. Hello. Hi, honey. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Thanks. Dinner, I have to tell you guys, was amazing. <laughs> it was good. Grandma made it, didn't she? Why don't you go get us a bottle of wine? Beautiful view out there. Yes, it is. You know, she said no to me, by the way. I saw you checking out the ring finger. Very perceptive. I was also a little surprised, Olivia, you even inviting me here. I thought we should try to get to know each other outside of the courtroom. Look, Olivia, I know you weren't very happy about some of those decisions. And I hope down the road that's not going to cause any problems. But since you're dating my daughter, I would have to recuse myself from any further legal dealings you might have. So why don't we just make a fresh start? OK, I would love that. <laughs> I'd also like you to understand that I'm not going through some midlife crisis thing here, OK? I care about Justine very much. And I know we're not in your courtroom, and I'm not under oath here, Your Honor, but I'd like you to believe me. I believe you. And as long as you treat her right, We'll do just fine. Cheers. You got keys, owner's card, insurance. It's all up to date. I guess that's all you need. You went to her grave the other day? Oh, it was her birthday. It would have been her birthday. I didn't think he'd remember. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever, Ian, you weren't even here. Come on, don't start this again. I was all alone. Yeah, and I was on a submarine under a polar ice cap. I, I didn't even know for a week. Yeah, but when you came home, you... Yeah, I what, I what? Go ahead. It was like you didn't even give a damn. You just, we never,
talking about her. We never... I was on that submarine for nine days before they could even let me off. All right, nine days knowing that you were back here and I... You know, when they first told me, I, I just I just kept walking around that sub, you know, looking for a place to cry, but there's not a lot of privacy on a sub, so I just had to suck it up. And then, you know, I... I came back here and you... You were so torn up, you know. I just, I just felt like, I, like I had to be the strong one, you know. I just, I just wanted to take care of you. I didn't even see her. If I could have just seen her, Still married, you know. Uh, well, not for long. So, can you just go? Anne, please, can you just go? Aye, aye. I know you're not gonna believe this, but, uh, I was planning to marry you even if you hadn't gotten pregnant. Try not to wreck the car. Oh, all right. Uh, so, our dining options are somewhat limited here. Uh, unless you know of a place that's not listed in any restaurant guide, please tell me you know a place. I'm afraid not. Excellent. What was that? Oh, that's just Hank. Hank? Yes, you might ask who Hank is. Um, of course, <laughs> Hank is my parakeet. I, um, okay, long story short, I take him into the paper with me every day, but I didn't have time to run him home before we, you know, we did this, so he's in the car. And, okay. Uh, I mean, don't worry, I'm not gonna bring him into the restaurant. You know, he's just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking, and okay. we're gonna do this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, um, just let me get, uh, that's not right. That's, that's better. <laughs> okay, your chariot awaits. Say hello to Hank. Hank, that's uh, hey, Hank. Olivia. Olivia, that's my bloody bird. <laughs> that, that's her. That's Judge Lockhart. I know. Of course, of course she sits at my table. Of course she does. Can you get Tony, please? Ask your tape table eleven for me. Why? What's the problem? You think I'm waiting on her? I'm not. I'm not waiting on her. Mm. Okay. Whatever you say. I bet you were one of those kids who knew exactly what she wanted to do when she grew up. Hmm. I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> you asked Santa Claus for a black robe and gavel, didn't you? My father was a lawyer. Man, I know. Not your mom. Right. Remember. When I was little, his office was my most favorite place in the whole world. All those law books. Of course, when I was five, I used to make a castle out of them. <laughs> but when I got older, oh, I don't know. What? Oh. Okay, this may sound silly, but there was something majestic about it. What? You're staring at me. No, I'm sorry, I was just, uh, just listening. And what about you? Were you born with this burning desire to write? <laughs> Uh, let's say I grew up with a burning desire to never do heavy labor. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Olivia. Stan. You look great, as always. So do you. New suit. Nice. Stan, this is Jack Griffin. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you've uh, done a great job with the paper. Oh, I've actually started reading it again. Thank you. How's Melanie? Oh, please. Like you care how Melanie's doing. 
I'm being polite. Part of your charm. Listen, I don't want to interrupt. I uh, just wanted to say it's always nice to see you. And you really look terrific. Thank you. Jack? Old friend? Old husband. <laughs> you guys seem awfully friendly, huh? We are. Is that so odd? <laughs> Compared to my ex, yeah. We didn't exactly have the most um, amicable divorce. You could say that. So I'm used to, you know, sirens and garbage trucks and all that kind of noise. I tell you, my first night here, I heard a cricket kept me up the entire night. I mean, I literally tore my entire place apart looking for this thing. Well, is it getting any better? <laughs> you know, actually, now that I'm getting used to the quiet, uh, I can actually sleep here. I mean, I've been an insomniac my entire life, but uh, I don't know, there's something about this place. Yeah, Cedar Cove can have that soothing effect on people. Yeah, so can a lobotomy. <laughs> Jack, you're a funny man. Mm. And a really good writer. You know, whenever I tell people that I'm a writer, they always think it's so fascinating. You know, like I'm Hemingway off to the bullfights every week. And I have a heart to tell them that uh, usually pretty dull and uh, uh, kind of lonely, actually. Well, it's um, still early. Would you like to come in and have a nightcap? Um. No. I'm gonna take a rain check on that. I, um, I've got some stuff to do back at the paper tonight. But, um, thank you. Thank you for the night. Thank you. Um, are we still on for tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, great. I'll see you at the theater at 345 then. 345. Sounds great. Jack, are you okay? No, I'm I'm fine. I just um I got a lot of work stuff going on in my mind and it's it's nothing. Good night. Night. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm on the schedule, aren't I? Thought you'd be seeing your husband off. Ex-husband, dad. Wait, they're pulling out today? He's on the Reynolds, isn't he? Yeah, the Reynolds. Yeah. Hate it when the Navy leaves town. That's half my tips right there. You always know just what to say, don't you, Bobby? The show's about to start. Let me pay for lunch, so I thought I'd bring some wine. Huh. Oh, you're supposed to ask permission to come aboard. Yeah, right. All right, here we go for you. Thank you. So, where's Warren? City, business. Don't you ever get lonely out here all by yourself? I have some friends. You know, it was weird the other night walking into the meeting and. I don't know, I'm just seeing you there. You're the only reason I joined that stupid committee. Maybe if I'd known you were going to be there, I wouldn't have been thrown off, but... Seth, no. Okay, what's going on? You invited me here to see your boat, remember? 
your boyfriend's out of town and you come by with a bottle of wine? Now, did you dump him and I'm like a rebound type thing? Because that's cool. I, I don't mind. It's nice to see that your ego hasn't changed. Do you remember what you told me when you dumped me, Justine? You said you saw no future with a dumb jock. I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, you did. I was 17. Hey, you go from dumb jock to richest guy in town. You know, marry him for a year or two and you're set for life. Just don't sign any prenup stuff. Maybe I love him. Did you ever think of that? You don't love that guy, Justine. Come on, you're just looking for something safe like you always were. You want to live here on this boat with no responsibilities? That's great. Now. I'll check back in on you in 20 years and see how you're doing. Sometimes growing up means doing things that you don't want to. Yeah, like hooking up with a rich guy. God, you're still 17. And you're 65. Have fun with your safe little life, you know? Come on by if you need a little adventure. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Mm. She should make a pretty good haul tonight there. Yeah. Pay for about five minutes with my lawyer. Why don't you let me help you out? Really? You would lend me money? No. I got a tip for you, though. Fourth race tomorrow at the track. It's a sure thing. You can't lose. How much you want me to put down? Dad, turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Tragedy tonight aboard recently dispatched nuclear submarine USS Reynolds as an explosion rocked the fully manned vessel. According to Navy officials, the explosion and consequent damage were limited to the forward compartment spaces only. The Naval Department has not yet determined the cause of the explosion. No names of casualties have been released. Our sources confirm that affected areas include crew living, command and control bases, You know, honey, you look a little depressed ever since I got back from the city, so I thought, you know what? Let's buy our present. You like it? What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? Honey, this is your own gallery. Handcrafted jewelry. I thought you'd bring on a couple of local artists to help you out. It's great foot traffic. There's a workshop in the back. Bingo. Whoa. Uh, Warren, I can't yeah, just... It's an investment, Justine. That's all. Not a gift, an investment. Besides, come on, give yourself some respect. You're talented. I think you could be very successful at something like this, which is why I thought the first place to buy it. Wait a minute. I... What does this mean? I mean? What are you expecting here? What strings are attached? There are no strings attached, I promise. Okay? Unless, of course, you want them. <laughs> come on, I can close it next week. What do you say? <laughs> oh! Yeah. That's the biggest rock I've ever seen. What's going on? Seth, I didn't think he'd be here. Can I see? Wow. <laughs> I guess you show me, huh? Deck when it happened, and he has a concussion. I'm gonna let me see him as soon as he can. I think good. he's gonna be okay. Good, good. You're too young to get married. You were younger than I am. Then learn from my mistakes. I'm sorry, you're just a kid, Justine. You don't even know what you want. Warren is one of the most interesting men in town. He takes care of me. He makes me feel safe. You know what I'm hearing here? I'm hearing security. I'm not hearing love. Let's throw everything else out. Business, the money, the fact that I'm leaving you. And ask yourself, and be honest. Do you love him? Honey, I want to be happy for you. Celebrate and open the champagne. But I don't feel 
and you love here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Look at you. You look great. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> You've put on a little weight. Oh, thank you. Good to see you're still honest. I think you are going to be a great nominee. And you know what? I would have put you up last time, but I didn't think I could drag you out of that town. Well, things change, Pete. Well, so they do. Listen, I'm going to be up front with you. Some of my advisors, they were a little surprised by my choice. Is that so? Yeah, small town, middle of nowhere. I think they're expecting a nominee with a little more name recognition. So why me? You've had a lot of decisions challenged in higher courts, and you've been overturned exactly once. <laughs> Do you know if that was a batting average, you'd be worth 70 million a year? <laughs> and the fact that I'm a woman could help with certain voters. Can't hurt. I do have one concern. My decision was totally legal. There were certain circumstances that came to my attention and I just felt nobody's questioning the legality it's the headline something like this appears on the front page of a newspaper people see controversy whether it's there or not I wasn't happy with that story either if we are going to close this nomination we have to avoid anything that even smells like controversy if the couple repetitions I will grant the divorce I just felt sometimes especially in a small town where everyone knows each other I think it's important to stay within the law, but use an element of common sense. In this case, I just thought it was the right thing to do. Okay, I hear you. I just don't want to see any more stories like this. Do we understand each other? I stand by my decision, Senator. Hey, just stay off the front page, okay? Come on, I'm taking you to dinner. I want you to meet some of my biggest donors. In a small town, you don't specialize. That's the good part. I get everything thrown at me. You not only get a broader sense of the law, but it's never boring. Much crime? Some. It may take place 80 miles away, but it ends up in front of me. What are your feelings about the Cathcart Technet case? I haven't heard both sides. Well, you must read the papers. It'll be brought up next term. Yes, I know. And? And what? Well. <laughs> What are your thoughts? I thought this was a dinner, not a litmus test. Are you avoiding the question? No, I'll tell you straight out. I'm not answering it. I appreciate you gentlemen supporting me, but if you think this is a preview of coming attractions regarding decisions, you're mistaken. Tom, back off. No judge is going to comment on something like that. At least not an honest one. <laughs> I'm a senator. The decisions you make in here will become a little piece of history. Believe me, I've thought about it. You just hope you make the right one. 
it's a little scary. Well, you'll do fine. This way. Your courtroom. Thank you, fellas. So, Troy, what are those two feds doing here in town? What feds? Those two that just walked out of here. What makes you think they were feds? They all go to the same tailor. Come on, Troy, give me something here, okay? Otherwise, my lead story this week's gonna be about a guy who builds amusing birdhouses. You know, I think what you're failing to grasp here, Jack, is that people like to read about birdhouses. Yeah, this uh, guy spent a whole year building an exact replica of Buckingham Palace. Between you and me, though, I really don't think the birds care. Well, I gotta go. Talk to you later. Yeah, bye. So I'll see you next week. Hey. You're late. Meeting's over. Yeah, yeah, I know. I thought I had to blow this one off after the last one. Look, I'm sorry. Um, I saw your ring, and I guess I just felt. Uh, I, I don't know what I felt, but... Seth. When you came out to the boat, what you said, maybe you were right. Maybe I do need to grow up a little. Um, I just felt for a minute maybe uh, I had a second chance. And I, I shouldn't have said what I did. I hope you're happy. Jack. Sorry to bother you. I don't mean to uh, intrude. But if you've got a minute, I uh, got something here I think you might want to see. Warren's been under surveillance. Troy's been working with some federal boys. What are they looking into? Financial stuff. Um, I didn't get the details. He just told me enough to, um, you know, get me to shut up for a while. Jack, this is evidence. No, no, Olivia, it's not. That was in the trash, all right? So uh, they obviously didn't think it was that important. But maybe I shouldn't have um, brought this to you. I, I just. No, uh, I'm glad you did. Okay. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yeah. It's gorgeous back here. It's my favorite place. Mm, yeah. Look, I owe you an explanation. You don't owe me anything. Olivia, I know that you're angry about the other day, okay? Do you know why? Yeah, I think I got a pretty good idea. Yeah. I don't think you do. If you had called and said specifically what was going on, why you had to cancel, that's one thing, but you're evasive, Jack, and I don't like that. I'm a judge. 
People stand in front of me and lie every day. And I have to read between the lines and try to figure out who I believe. I don't have time to do that on my day off. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm an alcoholic. The other day, when I was supposed to meet you at the play, I, uh, I panicked. Olivia, you're the first woman that I've dated sober. And I swear to God, I was in my car on my way to meet you, and uh, I just got very scared. I didn't think I could do it without a drink. So I turned around and uh, I spent the afternoon in my sponsor's living room gulping down copious amounts of coffee. This is why I'm in Cedar Cove. Back there in Philly, I, uh, I screwed up my job, my marriage, my son rarely talks to me now and quite frankly I can't blame him you see this this job is a life preserver for me it's my last chance and uh, I know it I'm sorry thank you for telling me Olivia, I've never met anyone like you. Or if I did, I wasn't sober enough to remember it. <laughs> I look at you. You're smart. You're gorgeous. You occasionally laugh at my lame jokes. <laughs> occasionally, yeah. And I can't stop thinking about you. You know, I go away for just a few days, and all of a sudden, you run into your old boyfriend. An old friend. And maybe if you made a little bit more of an effort to meet some of them. Justine, save it. Please, you never really wanted me to go to this reunion in the first place, and you know it. Warren, we're engaged now. Don't you think it's going to look a little... I don't care how it looks, Justine. No! Warren, it's always just the two of us. Hmm. I'm so isolated out here. In one night, please just come. So I can watch you dance with your fisherman friend? You're a jerk. Where are you going? Justine! You really think you could leave all this? It's not going to be easy, but I keep reminding myself that a federal judge can do a lot of good, change a lot of lives. Ah. And so why? You couldn't do that from here in Cedar Cove? You know, I hear half the little girls in this town want to go to law school because of you. Yeah, and that's what the world needs. More lawyers. <laughs> Thank you. Who's the little boy here with uh, Justine? That's my son, Jordan. Justine had a twin brother. He drowned when he was 13. I am so sorry. Justine saw it. She's never gotten over it. Stan and I were angry, guilty. The marriage broke up shortly after that. Do you think that maybe that had something to do with your denial of that divorce. Let's don't go there. I don't know, this might not be such a good idea. Well, it's better than base. Well, where am I gonna sleep? Right there. Where are you going to sleep? Same place. Are you sure about that? 
Yes, I am. So, you free tomorrow night? Turn around, look at that, Jack. I'm moving. Yeah. Mm. Jack, I really like you. I do. But let's not start something we can't finish. Mm. Well, you're the judge. <laughs> the base why did they call you back again no no i just think i better leave no why that's crazy you're gonna stay here i'm gonna take care of you why because you're my husband i'm not for long i don't know what i'm doing here you know it's just like we're playing house or something before i left you couldn't wait to divorce me and now what i mean what what's the big change i was scared I don't know. I thought you were dead. Just the thought of losing you and... I'm still not over losing her yet. Yeah, neither am I. I just, you know, I think it's better if I go. Please don't go. Please. Look at me. Please. Stay with me. Don't leave. Please. Okay. Hey. I hope you don't mind. No, no, of course not. Mmm. Vibe with Warren? Kind of. Been a little tough lately. Forget him. How he laughed and how he. But when I come in this house, it just all comes back like he was still here. Oh, it's so stupid. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not stupid. I still go sit in his room all the time. His bike is still in the garage. I can't bring myself to give it away. I'm sorry, I know this whole judge thing means a lot to you, and I don't mean to guilt trip you. It's just, it's gonna feel so weird without you around. I mean, I know Dad tries, but come on, it's always just been us. Hey, some ice cream in the freezer. I already had mine. You did not. No. <laughs> it's okay. I left you some.
Olivia, hi. I'll get straight to the point. I want you to break off the engagement. You know, Olivia, why, I, I, why are you doing this? I thought we had reached some sort of understanding here. Okay, look, I know we're never gonna be best friends, but I have every intention of making your daughter happy. Do you think these would make her happy? One of your business trips. Glad to know you weren't lonely. Would you get those? What matters is that I have them. Now, I haven't shown Justine, but I will if I have to. Break it off and I won't. Well, maybe I'll take that chance. You won't, Warren. Your reputation means too much to you. Justine would never tolerate this behavior. Do you really want everyone in this town knowing you got dumped? You know, Olivia, I love your daughter very much, no matter what you think. You don't love her. You're not capable of love. Okay. You know, two of us can play at this game. You know, you're not really acting very ethical right now, Your Honor. I'm a mother first. You're not gonna hurt my daughter. Be smart. Break it off. Yes, come in. Hey, uh, Judge, can we talk to you for a sec? You really should have counsel present. Well, actually, um, we, we'd like to drop our, uh... Petition? We figured maybe if we just spoke to you about it. Oh, we could save some legal fees. Consider it dropped. <laughs> um, these are for you. This isn't a bribe, is it? No, it's more of a thank you, I guess. Yeah, because there's something else we want to talk to you about. Um, see, when we got married, I was pregnant. And I was and, shipping out. And, well, the whole thing took like a minute. I was wearing jeans. Yeah, it wasn't real romantic. Just enjoying a little peace and quiet. Justine called from here. She wanted me to come pick her up. You haven't seen her, have you? No. There you go. One OJ straight up. Thanks, man. You must be the new guy. That's right, I am. We haven't met. I'm Wally Dorfman. Nice to finally meet you. So, Wally, have you caught anything good lately? Got a good stop sign the other day. Wally, what are you using for bait? Hey, uh, listen up, everybody. The mayor has an announcement to make. Everybody, could I have your attention? Yeah. Olivia? You're probably going to be too busy to miss us, but we are all really going to miss you. So, we figured you could take us with you. Thank you so much. Oh. I have a little uh, going away present for you. I thought you might want to see this before it runs in the paper tomorrow. Knowing what a stickler you are for things being written about you. Uh, thank you. We all dream of making it big someday. And for Olivia Lockhart, being appointed to a federal judgeship is like being called up to the major leagues more prestige, better money, a bigger audience. She'll have a chance to make decisions that will be studied in law books for years to come. Very few things in life, however, come without a price, and she'll be paying a steep one. 
she has to leave us. There will be a lot of sad people here in Cedar Cove on the day she does. Her family, her friends, young girls who looked up to her as a role model. Olivia Lockhart has touched a lot of lives here in Cedar Cove, probably more than she realizes. That's tough to do in a big city. So I can't help but think she'll be a little sad too. The city has lots to offer, but there's one thing she won't have there, her memories, because they're right here in Cedar Cove. Hi. Hey, you. Am I interrupting anything? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, doing an in-depth article on the Rotary Club pancake breakfast. I smell Pulitzer. You can't print it. <sighs> Come on, Olivia. <sighs> Do you know how hard that was for me to write that? You can't print it because I'm not going. I turned it down. You're kidding. Nope. But why? Why would you do that? Oh, lots of reasons, I guess. Maybe I'm afraid of being homesick. Olivia. This is a huge opportunity for you. I know. Maybe I'm crazy. I have wanted something like this my whole life. And now, it doesn't seem that important. Well, you know, maybe it isn't so crazy after all. There are more tears shed for answered prayers than unanswered. St. Teresa. What? You just quoted a saint. Yeah, well, I read it in a fortune cookie. <laughs> oh. Okay, I, um, I want to ask you something. Ask away. Okay, um, do you really think about me all the time? Well, not if there's a really good game on, because that would, you know. <laughs> 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 yes, I do. You know I do. Oh, wow. I really like that. Do you think we could do that dating thing again? Absolutely. <laughs> hey. Mm. Do you own a suit? We are gathered here today to celebrate the reunion of Ian and Cecilia. But first, on a personal note, I would like to say I am very, very happy to be here today. Ian, would you like to share your vows with us? Cecilia, for the rest of my life, This summer on Cedar Cove. You were gonna break up with me? Yes, and I should have done it earlier. Did you kiss him yet? Seth asked me to move in with him. That lighthouse is a historic landmark. There's nothing you or this town's gonna do to stop it. This injunction is declined. So where does this leave us? All the times that I needed fatherly advice, where were you? It needs to be kept secret. Get out of my chambers. Cedar Cove, Saturday nights at eight on Hallmark Channel, the heart of TV.